most vendors recommend EBGP as the uh, cross underlay. The operators got to juggle private ASNs and complex configurations. So boo, that seems like that sucks. Seeing as only the device loopbacks would be in the underlay, why have we not seen more vendors recommending ISIS underlays? Like how we run BGP overlays across an ISIS underlay in an MPLS VPN network. So, hmm, why BGP in the underlay in uh, for leaf spine networks as opposed to ISIS? Nick, well, I saw I, you nodding vigorously. I know. Did you have a thought there? I know Yvonne's got something that he's he's, he's <laughs> cooking it up there. <laughs> um, uh, while, while you while you figure that out, I'll 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 give my two cents. I like <laughs> ISIS as a as an IGP. Um, Convergence time alone for eBGP at any kind of scale or BGP in general for that any kind of scale has to be taken into account. And a lot of people don't think about that. If you're just injecting a whole bunch of slash 32s or however you're doing it, um, you know, you have to take into account convergence times, which are not short with, with BGP. My guess is that they're recommending it because of the filtering mechanisms that they think that you're going to no. gain out of that. Uh, no, Ivan says no. no. They are recommending it because Peter Lapuko wrote an RFC how he did things at Bing. And every stupid bloody vendor, sorry, thinks that every customer is Bing at a smaller scale. I mean, it's totally ridiculous. It's totally stupid. It's totally unneeded. And like two thirds of the data switch switching vendors are pushing that. What about what about the fact that we don't teach ISIS or any sort of fundamentals of ISIS no. in no, CCMP, no, no. CCNC? You know, any any basic networking course only talks about OSPF and BGP, and customers will only buy what they know. And therefore, if you suddenly came out and said, "Oh, we're going to do ECMP using ISIS," you'll have to go out and learn ISIS. I, I wonder how much of that. What do you think about that, Ivan? Uh, Greg, you can use OSPF. Uh, you, you, have you could 20, for you, you could you for HI, 20, but you couldn't for real multi-site. Like if you've got if you're doing a single deployment ACI, yes, they could have done that instead of BGP. But now that they're starting to do extend SDN controllers between data centers and between public clouds, and they're using uh, BGP. Uh, 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 okay, please stop talking about ACI. Stop talking about SDN controllers. We are in real world and we are discussing leaf and spine fabrics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't, well, I. I mean, to go back to your point, Greg, the reason I have this book right now on OSPF and ISIS by Jeff Doyle, this is, this is, goes back a few years, back to 2005, speaks to that training deficiency. I'm not a hundred percent confident in ISIS like I am with OSPF or BGP because I've spent many hundreds of hours with uh, OSPF and uh, and to a lesser degree BGP and feel much more comfortable deploying those ISIS. I know it's a lot like uh, uh, OSPF and I I spent time with it, just not to, hmm. to have the confidence where I'd be, yeah, I'm going to stand up my leaf spine underlay uh, with ISIS, even though it is actually increasingly common. I mean, it's out there. It's not like it's not like it's a corner case uh, protocol that's being used. Uh, Yvonne, going back to you, do you you said yes, you can use OSPF, but would well, ISIS see, in a leaf spine uh, environment make more sense? Ethan, the real question is: Should you use an IGP for the underlay, or should you use BGP for the underlay? Yeah. And if you're using BGP as a better IGP, why would you do that? And that made perfect sense for Peter Lapuko because he was dealing with 10,000 switches, and he said, "I don't want to have OSPF yeah. areas." There are other people who are dealing with 10,000 switches and they're perfectly fine using OSPF areas and it works for them. He decided not to do it. Mm. And then some people just took it because it was fashionable, it was sexy and it was Microsoft and it was hyperscale. And they started recommending using eBGP for four switch leaf and spine fabric. I've actually seen a document from a vendor saying we'll have two spines and two leaves and we'll run ebgp because draft lapuko something <laughs> <laughs> so one of the issues here is that there is um, a, a project called open fabric which i believe russ white is involved with 
which is actually using ISIS specifically for this, where they're using the extension variables um, so that an ISIS underlay. Now, whether that'll get legs or not, I don't know. I know you, you've had a look at this, Ivan. Yeah, well, uh, there's Open Fabric, which is modified ISIS. So it is not ISIS. It's using the some things from ISIS and modifying how it behaves. So it's a different protocol. It's not just TLVs on top of ISIS. Then there's yeah. Rift. And I had I did a podcast with Russ about Open Fabric. I did a podcast with uh, Tony P, whatever yeah, yeah, the, the whole long name is for <laughs> Juniper. Uh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> about Rift. And I did a podcast with Dinesh Dutt about the, you know, mm. insanity of this all. And all three of them agreed that until you have more than like 200 switches, you don't have a problem. Yeah. I guess it comes down to BGP doesn't matter. It, at four switches yeah. running BGP or OSPF or ISA, it actually doesn't matter which you run. Exactly. You, you, you take the one that you're familiar with. Yeah. And guess what? It's BGP. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in most in most enterprises, it's probably going to be OSPF, right? And there's that whole. You guys did a podcast years ago about the reason that ISIS was not as prevalent as it was, um, which is very entertaining. Listen, if people haven't uh, haven't yeah. done that, um, but you know, the a big part of that not using ISIS is just like Ethan said. There's just not uh, the the training isn't is the last time I saw it was when I did the CCNP like a lifetime ago. And that's the reason I failed the first routing test because I didn't know ISIS and it was adaptive. So I got like one wrong and then here's four more and you failed. <laughs> uh, so I went and got the book, which is right there and I read it. And, and now that's my preferred routing protocol of choice. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I think that, you know, I think, I think Ivan makes a good point. The answer is it didn't really matter which protocol they used. And most people know BGP and OSPF. OSPF doesn't do very well, doesn't allow you to have things like route reflectors or to do much over an API or even via the CLI. So BGP may Why would you sense. need that, Greg? We are talking about four switches or 20 <laughs> switches or 50 <laughs> switches. To go why back do you need Lepukov. an API to program 50 switches? Yeah. <laughs> to go back to Pedal the Pukov's use case, it was Microsoft and it was Bing. It was a large scale network. And if you read that uh, that draft, which I think became an RFC eventually. Yes, it is an RFC. Yeah. OK. Uh, there's a lot of very specific design recommendations that are in there because of lessons learned actually using BGP as an underlay. It gets fairly granular in there exactly how you implement it. It's not like you're just I'm just going to use eBGP and with a bunch of ASNs, it's actually more detailed than that, how that works and how that goes. Yeah. Um, uh, also, in, oh. in the uh, question set here, someone made the point that you can tweak VGP to get the timers down so that convergence does happen more yes. quickly, like with BFD uh, and so on, which I, is how you would do this in a data center environment. But it doesn't change that going back to the core, particularly with smaller scale fabrics that most of us are likely dealing with, because most of us aren't Bing or any sort of a hyperscale environment. You can use a regular IGP and it's going to be fine. Right. Uh, also, a warning about the timers. Everyone's BGP implementation was written in the 80s for the 56K leased lines. Yeah. The only vendor that has default timers that make sense for data center is Cumulus. For everyone else, you have to tweak every single timer to make it work efficient and fast. Mm. So at that point, you know, that's extra overhead that most people aren't going to think about, like I said, and that they have to go in and twiddle and make you either use automation or do, yeah. you know, handcrafted networking where they could just do a link state protocol, turn it on and then profit or whatever. It's the old story. It's what we know. Why haven't we replaced spanning tree in 30 years? We should have gone with shortest path bridging or um, the the other one that, that I can't remember. Or anything, else. Anything, Real, else yeah, yeah, yeah. anything else. Anything else. But we never did. 